which survivorship options should you take? So today we're going to be talking about the different survivorship options that you have and which one might be right for you. So if you're not familiar with what a survivorship option is, it's taking an option to take a lower pension amount in order for your spouse to get either all or a portion of your pension if you were to pass away before them. So the point I want to make first is that survivorship benefit is different than a beneficiary. Your beneficiaries are entitled to receive lump sums coming from plan three, 403Bs, DCPs, 401Ks, things like that. So when we have money invested in like a savings type account, those are the beneficiaries they get to lump sum we pass away. When it comes to our pension, we all want to elect a survivor benefit. So they're not going to get a lump sum from this because remember it's a pension. It's a monthly income guaranteed for the rest of your life. They're going to get a portion of your payments. How much they get, that's where the survivorship options come into play. So you have four options. The default is option one, which is no survivor. So that's the max benefit. So when you see those formulas, when it's like, how much I get for my pension, you know, plan three, that 1% times years work times top five consecutive years, that's calculating option one, your max benefit. So if you have a spouse and you're doing that math, we want to take into account that that's not what you're going to get. You're probably going to get less if you choose to have them as a survivor. When it comes to the survivor, option one is your life only, you pass away, it is done. Your spouse gets absolutely nothing after you pass away. So it's, it can be pretty risky, especially if your pension is significant part of your household income. So if we want to take the survivorship option, then we have options two, three, and four. And that's where I get a lot of the questions from is which one do I take? So first things if you need to know is you guys understand what the differences are between them. Okay. So when it comes to looking at your survivorship options, we need to look at kind of how they all work. So these are what they call the pension factors. So this is actually the PERS table. Every time a system has their own table. So for today, I'm just showing you the PERS table here. This is all on the DRX's website. They update it every October or so. So you don't really have to look at like numbers, I guess, but this is kind of how they calculate what the survivorship option is. All right, so we'll come back to this in a little bit. So first things first, if we zoom in over here. Now, so let's just say option one is our full uh, benefit here. So option one's our full benefit. So if we choose this, we get $700 a month. If you pass away, we get nothing. Now, options two, three, and four are going to be a percentage of this number. So you can see it's less. So you're taking a slightly less pension for the benefit of if I were to pass away, my spouse gets the portion of it. All right, so how does this work? And so option two is what they call the 100% option. So when I pass away, my spouse gets 100% of my benefit. Option three is going to be 50%. So they're going to get half of what I was getting. And option four is middle of the road. The most popular option is 66.6%. So they get two thirds of what I was getting. Now these factors here is how much of a reduction I get, right? So in the case I was showing you earlier, there is a three-year age gap between the state employee and their spouse. So if you are older than your spouse, you use the positive numbers in the table. And if you are younger than your spouse, you go down and you use the negative numbers. Now, they can calculate this all for you. I'm just showing you uh, kind of how it works behind the scenes here. So there's nothing you have to really do the math on your own. DRS can take care of all this for you. But I like to get behind the scenes and show clients how it all works. So in this case, this person had a wife that was three years younger. So it tells me that option two would be 78%. So they would take their $700, multiply it by 70%. That's what this is here and they get 1326. So if they chose option two instead of option one, they would get 1326. But if they were to pass away, their spouse would get 100% of that, which is 1326. So they keep all of it. So when you get your uh, estimate from DRS, when you get your request you your official pension estimate, you're gonna see all four of these options. They're not gonna show you this column here. The column that says spouse benefit, that's not in there. You have to cover that yourself. They're going to show you, hey, do you want option one at 17, option two at 13, you want 1489 or 1429? Well, a lot of people don't take the next step and do the math. So that's the first thing I could do is say, hey, option two is going to be the same. Option three, that was going to be half. And option four, my spouse get two thirds, would be 953. All right. So that's kind of how the different survivorship options actually base down. It's what you get and what your spouse would get. Now remember that you have cost of living adjustments in here. So over time, these will grow and your spouse will also benefit also grow. They also get the COLA when they get to inherit your pension. Now, another common question is, if I get a spousal benefit, can I ever go back to here? So as soon as you choose a spousal benefit, you are locked into that benefit. You can't change it unless 
your spouse passes away before you do. So if your spouse predeceases you, you can go back to DRS and they will bump you back up to option one, the full benefit. So that's a, a nice feature there. So if that were to happen, that's one of the first things you want to do is call DRS, let them know about it so you can start getting more money out of the system. Now, the next question is, so the overall question of this whole thing was, which one should I take, right? So great, those are all good numbers. Which one do I want? So it's going to depend on your household. So you want to look at how much of a benefit are you okay with and how much does your spouse actually need? So if I were to pass away, does my, do we have enough assets? Does my spouse have enough income from Social Security and maybe their pension you know, to live off of? Remember that when Social Security, only one checks, one of the Social Security checks will stick around the highest one. So you pass away, there's only one check coming in there. So it may not be a bad idea to have a spouse benefit for that reason alone. Now, I mentioned earlier, option four is kind of the middle of the road. That's where a lot of people take. So you get a little bit more money than option two, but and your spouse still gets more money than they're getting option three. If you're looking for like, which one breaks even, which one makes the most sense, that's what all these number jargon is on this side here. I build this myself, but basically, if you look here, it says... Option two was thirteen twenty six. Option four was fourteen twenty nine. It's one hundred fifty dollars a month. So if I chose to go option two, the hundred percent option versus option four, I would lose one hundred and three dollars per month that first year, which is twelve hundred dollars a year. And if there was no cost of adjustments, just kind of keep math simple here, that would be the same every year. So after ten years, I would have been out twelve thousand dollars money that I didn't get because I chose a higher survivor survivor benefit for my spouse. But if something did happen to me, say at year 10, my spouse would get my full benefit still. Nothing would change in the household. They would continue to get that 1326, right? If I chose that higher option at 1429, that gets bumped down to 953. So in that case, now my spouse is actually making $370 more than what we would have gotten if we chose option four here. So that's about $4,400 per year. So the question is, you know, how long does it take to break even? So if I chose option two, and I gave up this $12,000 over 10 years, and then someone passes away, how long will my spouse have to live and collect that 100% benefit to make up for the money I gave up to the state over those 10 years? So that's what this is showing you here, this column. So if we have $4,400 a year in income, we get up 12,000, it's just slightly under three years. So if your spouse outlives you by three years, you've got all your money back out of the system. So it was a good bet. In this case, this person had a spouse that was three years younger. So probably a pretty good chance um, that that's going to happen. So that's all these tables are going to show you is kind of what the break even is in years. If you want to go more of an extreme case, let's go down to 25 years. At that point, we give it up $31,000. Again, this is not including cost of adjustments. We'll get to that next. It would take about seven years. For a lot of people, you know, three to seven years, that's kind of the break even, you know, assuming there's no cost of living here. So it's something you guys have to decide is and look at your family history and health to see you know, what, what benefit you want to go with. Now, let's put inflation in here. So we'll go with 3%, which is the max um, inflation benefit that they do each year. So if every single year from now on the rest of retirement, they actually did 3% payout every single year, the numbers look a little bit differently because these pension benefits that we see in our statements, that's the first year. And then we get the COLA. Yeah. Right, so we get that three percent cola or whatever it is. In this example, we're using three every single year. So as these benefits rise, you can see that the difference, the amount I'm giving up per month by choosing option four in this case, grows because it's a higher number, right? So obviously, three percent of seventeen hundred is going to be more than three percent of sixteen hundred. So you can see that this column rises over time, and that the total deficit increases. So let's go back to year ten again. Instead of being twelve, we're now we're out fourteen thousand dollars. That's how much we gave up, right? So if we chose option four instead of two here, we would have earned fourteen thousand dollars more over the last ten years. Now let's go back again. Let's say something happened after ten years, my spouse gets in. So remember, you only get two thirds of option four. So it would go from you know eighteen hundred dollars down to twelve hundred dollars. Whereas if you chose option two, a seventeen hundred thirty dollars would stick around, and the spouse could still get seventeen thirty. So you can see that the difference, how much more they would bring in in that case is 485 and they have the opposite. So when we have a, a lot of inflation rises, while the penalty for not taking option four grows, if I were to pass away, it actually benefits my spouse more. You can see the difference here. This one actually grows. So the more inflation we have and when they, based on when they get it, the higher or more money they'd be making, 
versus option two. So if we go back to option or year 10 here, 45, it was $4,400 before, now it's 5,800. It only takes two and a half years. So a little, you know, not a big difference, but still a little bit over two years. We go back to year 25, like you said before, breaking event five years instead of six and a half. What this means is you should really consider the op taking the option between option two and option four. You really want to look at it, look at your family history, the age difference between you two, and try to determine which one's going to be more beneficial to us. If you're okay with giving up a hundred bucks a month for the benefit of your spouse, potentially getting 400 something dollars more per month after you pass away, it's not a bad deal. And that's what I've been actually um, helping a lot of clients with is trying to see, you know, is option two really as bad as it seems or can it actually benefit us in the long run? So as far as which one you take, that's, that's kind of what you guys want to look at. If you need help diving into this kind of stuff, we help you with it all the time. Feel free to schedule a meeting. Uh, link is down below. I'll catch you guys all next week. Remember that your future depends on what you do today.